Transit, how's it going? Are we excited to be back in the attic again? I know I asked you that last week, but we're here, we're back, we did it. You kept your masks on last week, so they let us come back, which is exciting. My name is Lauren, uh, and I am super pumped to be here with you today. If it's your very first time, welcome to Transit. We're so glad that you're here. And we are gonna be continuing our series called Questions. So you picked a great day to be here because we're all in the same boat with this series. But before we get started, I have a, I, I have a question for you, actually. Who in here knows what this is? Yes. Floaties. That's what my family calls them too. We call them floaties. Uh, no, I cannot give this away. I borrowed it from a friend of mine named Stella. Um, this is, I guess it goes this way. I don't have children. I don't know. Um, these are, it's like a, it's a swim floaty. It's like a life vest. So little kids wear these, right, when you don't know how to swim because they keep you from Drowning, yes. So when you were a little kid, you also wore one of these. Right now, when I was a little kid, which was, um, gosh, it feels like centuries ago, um, we didn't have anything this nice and fancy. We had just like the plastic leaders, you remember these, the plastic inflatable ones that were like $2 at Walmart. And if you didn't have enough sunscreen on your arm, it, you could not get it past your elbow. Like, And they burned to get, they were the worst thing. So this is... I mean, this is luxury that the kids have now. But this life vest is so important, right? Because it keeps you afloat. And a few summers ago, a lot of summers ago, I was a camp counselor at a summer camp uh, out of state here, so not Woodlands or Glisten, so no need to be afraid when I tell you this story. Um, and I was on my way to camp, and I get a call from my boss at the time, and he's like, hey, we really need lifeguards. We'll pay you $50 if you can be a lifeguard for the full summer. And I was in college, so I was like, $50? Yes! It was a terrible deal. Never say yes to that deal. But I go through lifeguard training, and my biggest fear, if you, if you really knew me, you know, my biggest fear is deep, dark waters. And we did lifeguard training in a lake, so my nightmare come to life. And there were snapping turtles in this lake. Um, it was awful. It was terrible. And when you get certified to be a lifeguard, one of the things you have to do is called a duck dive. So you have to go up and dive all the way to the bottom because if someone's missing, you have to do a whole scan of the lake. It's so terribly dark, I know. But this was... this was my nightmare come to life. And so we go through the training. I don't know how I passed, but I did. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm certified, whatever. As long as they never schedule me to be a lifeguard, we're good. Well, day one of camp, I get scheduled to do swim checks. Now, swim checks are basically a camper comes to camp. They check into their cabin. They meet their counselor. They get their bathing suit on. They go directly to the lake, and they have to swim a certain distance. If they make it, they get a green band, if they don't, they get a red band, which tells us that they need something like this. They need a life vest to help them swim. So I'm thinking, what are the odds that I actually have to do a rescue on my first day as a lifeguard? High. The odds were high, apparently. And so I am in this lake, and I'm like, I'm going to get eaten by a snapping turtle. This is, I want to quit this job already. And this boy comes to the edge of the dock. He's about six, maybe seven. And I say, hey, bud, what's your name? And uh, we'll say, he said, uh, his name's Tommy. My name's Tommy. And I was like, Tommy, great. So here's the deal, Tommy. You're going to jump into the lake, and I'm going to swim with you. We're going to go to that buoy over there. And if you make it, you're going to get a green band. And if you don't, you're going to get a red band, which just lets us know that you need some help. Okay? And he's like, yeah, yeah. He gets to the edge of the dock. He looks right at me, and he says, this isn't going to go well jumps in, sinks like a rock, and I am like, no, so get Tommy out, and we, there's no snapping turtles, and I'm definitely done, I'm putting in my two weeks at this point, but I get Tommy out, and he's like, I'll go get my red band now, and I say, yes, you will, Tommy, you will get six red bands, because you don't even need to be in the water, so he gets out, gets his red band, I see him all week, and he, you know, has his life vest on, he's fine, he's enjoying it, well, we have some campers who I guess are doing well, and they get to come to camp twice. So he was there the first week, and then he's there the last week of camp as well. And so the last week of camp is happening. I, thank God, am not doing swim checks. And, but I see Tommy walking down to the dock, and I'm thinking, they're not ready for Tommy. And he gets to the edge of the dock. He's looking a little more confident, jumps in, swims like a fish. I mean, crushes it. The lifeguard couldn't even keep up with him. I'm like, 
what just happened? So he gets out of the water, and I say, Tommy, what happened? And he goes, well, I wanted to learn how to swim, and so I did, and I made the change from red band to green band. And that was exactly what he did. So he got a green band, and he was swimming all around the lake the whole week. And I thought of Tommy when I was thinking about this talk, because I think, especially as kids, we all have big changes that happen, right? Everyone in this room went from not being able to swim, you had to wear something like this, until things changed and you learned how to swim. You rode a tricycle until things changed and you learned how to ride a bike with just two wheels. You slept in a crib until you grew up and things changed and you moved to a bigger bed. Now all these changes though were two things. They were predicted and they were wanted. And we love when changes are predicted and wanted. Like it's safe to say as a child, we can predict that they're going to learn how to swim and they want to learn how to swim. It's safe to say that we can predict that you're gonna learn how to ride a bike and you wanna learn how to ride a bike. I can predict that you're gonna grow up and grow out of a crib and you want that. You don't wanna stay in a crib forever. And so there's these changes that happen in our life that are both predicted and wanted and we like changes when they are predicted and wanted. Now, sometimes we have changes that are just one or the other. Maybe you didn't want to leave elementary school. You just really liked fifth grade. You had a great teacher. You had a great class. I don't know what it was, but you just loved elementary school. You knew what was up. You knew where to go, all that stuff. You didn't want to leave, but it was predicted that you would eventually go to middle school. Maybe, if you're being really honest with yourself, you don't want another sibling but your mom is pregnant, your parents are adopting, and it's pretty predictable that you're about to get another sibling, and that's a major life change. But the worst kinds of changes are the ones that are neither of these things. When we face a change that we didn't see coming and that we don't want to happen, we're not excited about it. We don't love it. For instance, maybe your mom got a promotion and now your whole family has to move across the country and you didn't see that coming, and you don't wanna move. And that's a big change that you're not ready for, that you, you didn't want to do. Maybe your parents are getting a divorce, and you didn't predict that, and you don't want that. But now you're left facing this massive change. Or maybe there's a pandemic, and it ruins what you thought this last year of your life would be. I didn't see it coming, I don't want that, but it was a change that happened. And here's what I find interesting, is that the changes that we predicted and that we wanted, we're really excited about. And so we tell people about them, you know, uh, I'm moving, but I'm moving closer to a friend, it's gonna be so fun, because we're living on the same street, and yeah, it's a change, and I'm excited about it, or my family's getting a dog, we picked one dog out, and we're picking it up in six weeks, and we can't wait, and we're preparing for that, and we want that, we're excited about these changes, but when a change isn't predicted or wanted, we usually don't tell people about it. We're usually not happy about it. Maybe we're afraid. Maybe we don't want to talk about it because we're just in denial that it's happening. And the truth is, is that in those moments when we're facing change that we didn't want and that we're nervous about, that we're scared about, that's when we can start asking these questions of, God, what are you doing? God, do you even care? God, did you forget about me? Why is everything in my life changing? And we can ask these really tough questions, which by the way, God can handle your questions and there's no reason to be ashamed of those questions. We all have them, we all wonder them at some point or another. And the good news is, is we're not the first people to ever have these questions. There was actually, there was a guy named Moses and we learn about him in the Old Testament and he was leading the people of Israel to the promised land. And just real quick, some fun facts about Moses, because I love a good fun fact. Moses was the baby in his family. Anyone in here the baby of your family? Mm-hmm, a few of you. He had two older siblings. He had a sister named Miriam and a brother named Aaron. Moses, same guy, maybe you heard of him, who when he was a baby, there was a decree to kill all the Hebrew boys. And so his mom kept him safe and then put him in a basket 
and put him in the Nile River in the hopes that he would find a safer home. And he was eventually found by Pharaoh's daughter. So he was raised in a royal family. This is also the same guy, Moses, who received the Ten Commandments. He didn't write them, but he received them from God. And it was because of him that we know that they exist. And the craziest fact about Moses is that when he died, he was 120 years old, which is old, you guys. That is very, very old. And he was, as he was getting older, he was still leading the people of Israel. And another kind of fun fact about him was that Moses actually knew when he was going to die. Him and God talked about it. Bible's crazy, y'all. Check it out. It's in Deuteronomy. But he knew that his time was coming, and he knew that it was time to step down uh, as the leader of the people of Israel, and someone else was going to take his place, and that guy's name was Joshua. But Moses knew that the people of Israel were probably going to be sad because they really loved Moses, and he was a great leader. And this was an unwanted change. And maybe it was predicted. I mean, maybe people thought, yeah, Moses is getting old and maybe it's time. But this was going to be news to them. And so as Moses is speaking to the people of Israel, he says this in Deuteronomy 31, 6. He says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So Moses says this to all the people of Israel. And then he says, Joshua. And two verses later, in 31.8, he says this directly to Joshua. He says, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. And then the next book of the Bible in Joshua, Joshua in chapter one is talking to God, is praying to God, and he's having this conversation with God about how he's the new leader. And this is a huge task to lead the people of Israel to the promised land. And God says this to Joshua in Joshua chapter one, nine. God says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you you go. And so this idea that God is with you wherever you're going, whatever you're facing, he's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. Must have been a really important idea for God, for us to know. Because God told Moses, Moses told his people, Moses told Joshua, God told Joshua again. And all throughout scripture, you can find this reminder. And this verse is so interesting to me because when I think we first, when we first read it, we see this word commanded, and that feels kind of harsh. It feels like a rule. It feels kind of strict. It's like, God, chill out. Like, I get it. You commanded us. Be strong and courageous. But I think this word is actually really freeing. I think this whole verse is really freeing. That God says, haven't I told you already? That you can look fear in the face, and you can be strong, and you can be courageous because I'm not going anywhere, because I'm not gonna leave you. I actually, I actually go before you. I'm with you through all this. I am with you and I am for you. And because of that, you can be strong and courageous. That even as things change, we can trust that God never will. We can trust that he's going to be with us, that he's going to go before us, that he already knows about this change that we're facing. And However scared we are, we can be strong and we can be courageous. Now, we can also, we can still be scared and that's okay. We can still be sad and that's okay. We can still be nervous and uncertain and all those feelings are okay. And God can handle all those feelings. He knows that. But he also gives us the freedom and the permission to look at change and to look at the things we're scared of and be strong. And courageous. And so I, I don't know what changes you're facing. I don't know if you're facing changes that were predicted or wanted or neither. But earlier on, I said that sometimes when we face changes, we don't want to talk about them because we don't want to think about them. We're in denial. We want to believe they're not going to happen. Or maybe we're just scared of them. Or maybe we're just mad. Whatever the reason is, sometimes we don't always talk about them. And I we we'll just challenge you today in your small group or maybe after group just with the leader to open up and to talk about the things you're facing 
that maybe make you a little scared, that maybe make you a little upset or angry, and allow someone to come alongside of you and to remind you that God is with you through it all, and they can support you and encourage you in that. Or maybe you're sitting here and you're like, life's great, I got nothing going on, and that's awesome. Challenge for you too, for everyone in this room, to look at one of those verses, the Deuteronomy 31, 6, 31, 8, or the Joshua 1, 9, and write it down somewhere. And put it where, I don't know, you're tempted to feel nervous. Maybe it's in your locker. Maybe it's on a mirror. Maybe it's just in the car where you normally sit. Wherever it needs to be to remind you that God is for you, he is with you, and you can be strong and courageous.